to what the most high God got. That's all you want to do is be your own personal savior. That's the bullshit that you're learning, so you never come into the knowledge of the truth. You got that? Uh, verse 8. Now in Janus and Jabri's withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Uh, Men of corrupt minds, reprobate concerning the faith. Reprobate concerning the faith, because you got corrupt minds. You reject everything that's true. You want to live in the lie all the goddamn time. La La Land ain't for you, right? We, we talk about the metaverse, right? There's no bigger metaverse than what we already dealing with in America, right? The metaverse is when you walk out the house and you hear people say everybody's the same, nobody's different, right? But there's certain people that can't stand outside in the sun. He said facts. He knows something right there, right? Why they lie about that? But then they treat you like you less, right? Especially the ones that can stand out in the sun. Especially the ones that had their land stolen from them. So you know what we want to teach you? We want to teach you that not only is the Most High going to get these people off the land they stole from you, but he's going to give you and your children more than what our forefathers ever had, right? The blacks, Hispanics, and the Native Americans are the Israelites, right? And as soon as we stop being reprobate, sick in the damn mind, the Most High is going to correct our situation after we correct our steps. That's real. The book of Proverbs, the 22nd chapter, the third verse, a prudent man perceiveth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. And that's a big thing, too. Uh, what's esteemed in these last days? Foolishness, finally and sat in great dignity. People who's ignorant to what's going on around them. It says a, a wise man understands what's going on at all times. And he, he acts accordingly. He moves the right way accordingly. He's looking for an opportunity to keep the commandments of the Lord in, in, in a time of disarray. All right? He's not looking at how to diversify his investment portfolio all the time. He's balancing out what matters in the world. Spiritual matters, right? Hey, how do y'all feel about what's going on with the blacks and Hispanics in America right now? How do you... We live in Denver. There are no black people there. You said you guys live in Denver and there's no black people there? What about the Native Americans? They was pretty much exterminated out of there. How do y'all feel about that? What do you think should happen because of that? They're starting to pay more respect over time, right? Guess what the Most High going to do over time? He's going to exterminate this rash of a society and the people that have fought it through the earth. I'm talking about the white man, a.k.a. the devil the Bible speaks of, right? They think very little of your affliction. That's why we are here to wake you up to it. They tell you everybody's the same, but when it comes to showing y'all respect, they show you only a little more, little by little over time. I need to preach that. The book of Exodus, second chapter, the 25th verse, the classic. And God looked upon the children of Israel, and God had respect unto them. Powerful precepts, Lord Priest. If, if the white man's not going to show you respect, if the China man's not going to show you respect, guess what? The Most High, he's always showing you respect. You just need to learn to respect your damn self. You just need to learn to stop being a bad bitch and a real nigga. Why stop being a damn dope boy? Stop killing your people. Stop robbing your people. Stop raping your women. Stop stealing from your children. Running up their goddamn uh, fucking their credit score up before they even born and shit. Right? Leave that mindset of wastefulness and come back to these law statutes and commandments. Please, I just want to drill it in. It's the book of Sirach, the 46th chapter, and the 14th verse. By the law of the Lord, he judged the congregation. By the law of the Lord, we judge the congregation. And this is important because righteous judgment has been removed from our communities and what's been put in this place, foolishness, vanity. And the Lord had respect unto Jacob. The Lord had respect unto Jacob. And he gave us these law, statutes, and commandments. And when he gave them to us, he said, what? This is going to be your wisdom in the sight of the nations. And ain't nobody going to be able to say there's a more wise and understanding people than you. But now they look at you and say there's no more foolish people than you. Black man, Hispanic man, Native American man. Something must be wrong with them. They're a bunch of degenerates. They feel the prison system. And the problem is that you give them a report to go and exaggerate to begin with. They can't say half the things they say about us if we would just stop doing them. They can't say our women is leading the abortion numbers if they would stop doing it. They wouldn't say our men is a bunch of killers, a bunch of liars if we would stop doing it. They wouldn't say we are uh, we are front running the prison system if we would stop doing it, right? There's a lot of that that we can't control, but you better believe there's a whole goddamn bunch that we can, right? The Most High said that we will be hitting these places we're breaking his commandments. And what do we do? We continue to break them. Why? Because God is good. <laughs> Ain't that bullshit.
the book of Job, the 22nd chapter, in the second verse. Can a man be profitable unto God as he that is wise may be profitable unto himself? It is, it, it, I'm sorry, is it any pleasure to the Almighty that thou art righteous? Or, or is it gain to him that thou makest thy ways perfect? Will he reprove thee for fear of thee? Will he enter with thee into judgment? The reason why I brought this out is it's not for the most high for you not to eat pork. It's for your dumb ass Very to nice. not eat pork so that you can have a healthier life. It's for you not to commit adultery because that way you don't have to piss off another brother and get you and your whole family marked off because you slept with another man's wife and that anger built up in that man. It's not for the most high. It's to protect your dumb ass. No, nah, no salaki. The brother brought out a powerful point. It's like we don't understand a lot of things in the earth, right? But we choose to lean on our own understanding anyway. And because of that, it's all kind of murder around us. A lot of things that can be prevented if we just stop pretending like we know everything all the goddamn time. You stop eating pork, you stop getting uh, tapeworms. You stop eating pork, you stop getting cancer. You stop eating pork, you stop getting toxoplasm in your damn brain, fucking your mood up, giving you depression. Right? Not to mention the shellfish, the crab, and the lobster, right? The, uh, all the gross shit that come from the bottom of the ocean hill. The book of Proverbs, the third chapter, the fifth verse. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. Be on fire today. If you would just trust in the Lord, guess what? It wouldn't be little babies getting shot in the head for the iniquity of their forefathers, right? It was a case not too long ago. I had to pull away from it just as quickly as I heard about it. Because a little baby got shot right point blank range in the head. It wasn't a straight bullet. It wasn't an accident. It was on purpose. And when the man was brought into court, because he get, he because he got caught after doing the goddamn killing, after killing that man and his family, guess what? He laughed. Our own people. Because we lean on our own understanding. Let me get, um, you know, let me do what you got, and then let me get um, Ecclesiastes. It's the book of Matthew, the 8th chapter, the 31st verse. So the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. And he said unto them, Go. And when they were came out, they went into the herd of swine. And behold, the herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea and perished in the waters. The brother said, Y'all eating these swine is getting into your brain. It's causing your mood to get fucked up because you're eating spirits. <laughs> Bring that up. Hey, hey, and on top of that, they're killing the swine in a fucked up way. So the spiritual attributes of it that's killing you is multiplied. Um, Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. That's all right. No, you good. I do it too. Ecclesiastes 7 and 2. Bible for That's it. Yeah, it's like, you good. You don't the book of Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter, the second verse. It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of the beast. For that is the end of all men. In the living will lay in, lay in to his heart. The problem is, we speak these words unto you, you get upset about it, all that thing may be uncomfortable. He told me something I didn't want to hear. Then what you do is you get all sad about it and you try to find a way to party it off. Right? You try to find a way to shake it at all instead of reapplying yourself the right way. And sometimes you got to be smart enough to know to stay in the house of mourning. Because those scriptures say that through sadness, the heart is made better. Because it's bitter and it's sweet. You got to take the good with the bad when it comes to the truth. But then at the end of it, 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 it do what? It sets your ass free. But the nigga don't want to be free though. Which is why the most high through his prophets then ask, look, are you, are you, are you homeborn slaves or what? Have you been passed down from generation to generation? And the answer is yes. The answer is yes. So practically speaking, what we got to do is free ourselves. Decolonize your damn mind. Stop being a nigga for the white man. Stop being a speak for the white man. Stop being everything that they say you're going to be. Be what the most high God told you to be. You got no standards to fear but to uphold but his. And the minute you start to grasp that black man, Hispanic man, you're going to see the whole world change before you. Right? It's gonna be less things to worry about. Uh, you ain't got you ain't got to worry about the chills in the sky. You got to worry about what's gonna happen after they scoop up the people that's gonna get a ride on them when this thing is all said and done. When you see that flood of fire coming upon the earth, that the Most High is gonna send real shortly. Valley of Jehoshaphat is 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 burning up right there in the Middle East, so called. You got your preset? 
the book of Hebrews, of Hebrews, the fourth chapter, dropping it down to the 12th verse. For the word of the Lord is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. When we come with this word, you got to understand it hurt for a reason. It's quick and powerful. More powerful than any two-edged sword. So it's going to cut in a way that you can't comprehend. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Even the, the dividing asunder of what? Of soul and spirit. It, it separates what's your conscious, which starts in your flesh when your spirit meets your flesh. It separates that from what's actually spiritual. When you in your flesh, you think everything just makes sense that you can feel. But the Bible comes along and gives proper perspective. That's what that means. That's how sharp this word is, is it can correct your steps. It can carve you out, take you from being a diamond in the rough and carve you out so you look like the precious stone you are. Get the rubble up off you. Have you looking like a beautiful gem. End of the joints and marrow. End is a discerner of the thoughts in the intent of the heart. We can cut a whole body apart. Break break to pieces the the the, the counsel of the ungodly. Right? I need to preach that. I need to... <laughs> hey, I, I, the book of Proverbs, the 20th chapter, the 30th verse. The blueness of a wound cleanses away evil. The blue of a wound, right? That's a bruise. The bruise, it cleanses evil, right? When a dad, when he when he's whipping his kid's ass, and when a mom has to whip the kid's ass, what it does is it chases away evil, believe it or not. That's why they say spare the rod and spoil the goddamn child, right? You don't you don't correct somebody's ways, they can't change. You don't yank your homeboy out the street with a car come and guess what? His shirt might his shirt ain't gonna be torn and he's gonna be dead. But sometimes his ego might have to be bruised so you can save his life. It happened all the time. You don't think it hurt if somebody died. To, uh, to, to, to jump in front of you, to, to knock you down so a bullet don't hit you, you're going to be bruised and straight, but it's going to heal you. It's going to make sure that you don't perish in the way. So do strikes the inward parts of the devil. So I'll read again from the top. The blueness of a wound cleanses away evil. So do strikes the inward parts of the belly. All praises to the most high. Let's get, uh, go back to Ecclesiastes 7 and 4 about what we said. Ecclesiastes 7 and 4. Our people don't want to be chastised by the most high. They can't, they can't stop the fact that it's happening, but they can't deal with the reality that it represents. And it's that the most high loves you and he wants you to correct your ways. He don't want you to just live it up because it's 2023 and, and tomorrow might be your last nigga. That's why you got to correct your shit so you don't got to come back in the next two or three generations being a slave all over again. The book of Ecclesiastes, seventh chapter, the fourth verse. The book of Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter, the fourth verse. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of the fools is in the house of mirth. So, so allow yourself to take this in, soak it up. Allow yourself to be bothered by it. You should be bothered by the fact that the white man still says that you're three fifths of a human being. You shouldn't hear that and think to yourself, oh, well, that ain't right. I ain't gonna listen to it. I love white girls. Like, you might, but guess what? You're still three fifths of a goddamn human being. The moment you realize that, the moment you realize that voting is a goddamn joke, that's the moment you realize these police ain't your friend. That's the moment that you realize that everything that they promote to you on the damn TV ain't for nothing but your destruction. Let me get, uh, we're gonna skip Joel. Let me get Isaiah 66 and 10 through 16. We're gonna wrap it up in a second. It's freezing. It's okay, okay, sorry. You got a precept with you. <laughs> the book of Romans, the 12th chapter, and the 10th verse. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. So we're going to switch the mode of focus, right? Read that again slow. This is a this is one of the most important scriptures, right? Especially for you so-called Christians, right? These are the verses you're supposed to be most familiar with. And this is for you Israelites too. We're supposed to prefer one another, right? Our forefathers made the mistake of preferring the Grecians in their ways best of all and forsaking our own. Go ahead. The book of Romans, the 12th chapter, the 10th verse. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love. With brotherly love. We got to learn to let go of Master's hand, right? The shackles ain't all no more. We holding Master's hand, leaving on to it for life. Even though he's murdering them, we need to learn to let that go, let go of the way of the Grecians, 
Stop following in his footsteps and look to your brothers and your sisters and be kindly affectionate to them. Instead of kindly affectionate to the white man's asshole when you let him put your head at, at night. Let her have your head up the white man's ass like a new pity cap. Good. <laughs> Africans be having their head up cows. You got our head up the white man's ass. Ain't that a bitch? Ain't that a bitch, right? And there's no more vile beast than the white man. We could have picked cows with him. And they'll come over here and be better off. Right? They come up. They, they pull their hair fresh out of a cow's ass, come here, and they straight. We up, though. They can own a beauty supply store God. after pulling their head out of cow's ass. But we, we, we just can't see how, we just can't see because our heads up masses of ass, right? And so he continues to succeed, and, and he continues to be satisfied by the texture of your head and his ass, right? And he's feeling himself, and he's feeling you, right? But the moment you take your head out of his ass, look how he esteems you then, especially after you wash your damn face, especially after you groom yourself to be the child of God that you're supposed to be. We're going to stick to that metaphor. All praises to the most high, brother, part that out. Why right, we gonna stick to that metaphor? As soon as you start to groom yourself and carry yourself the way you ought to, he's gonna show you that hate. He's gonna show you what the other nations showed you when they saw how glorious our God was and how he loved us. And you will see how they come against us like the way they did when we was building our temple to the most high. When we was exalting his name, when we were showing that we had more wisdom, they was jealous and they couldn't help it. And they couldn't do nothing about it either. But right now, the white man got the upper hand because you prefer his ass and you prefer to hate the laws of the Most High God. Give us your God. Sirach 12 and 10, never trust thine enemy. Well, never supposed to trust your goddamn enemy. Never. But you, the problem is, is that you've lost perspective. Now you think your brother is your enemy and you think your enemy is your friend. That's a big problem. Your, 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 uh, your subscription is off or your prescription is off. Time to get your lenses corrected. Time to get re-examined. Or just get the healing, get your sight restored like what the world called Christ came to do. After you read what you got, let's get Luke 4 and 16.